This program is rated G and is suitable for general audiences. Broccoli, the onions, the cabbages, and the tomatoes, okay? The whole thing? The whole thing. Do you want to know a secret? These are not vegetables. They're space pods. What? Oh, yeah. Please. <laughs> the tiny astronauts that colonized this area, they built them. But now, their colony is under attack by these hideous space monsters. Oh. Yeah. So... The only way for you to save the day is to take these microelectron converters and form a force field all the way around the colony. Give me a break. Actually, if you want to know the truth, the chemicals in slugs react to the copper in pennies and it keeps them away. Do I look like a child to you? Uh, I guess not. <laughs> Hey. Dinner's in the pressure cooker. 20 minutes, all right? Hey. He's done with the space invaders. Moving on to the pterodactyls. Pterodactyls? Chicken coop. Oh, uh, right. I don't remember you being this quick to grow up. Sign of the times. <laughs> What's this? You need some help? Fresh right order. Nope, I'm done. All right, I'm going to go wash up. Sounds good. No need to shuffle, ladies. I assure you, I'm a man of honor. Mom? Mom? Henry. Oh, sorry. Mom? Yeah? You know how we're supposed to keep critters out of the barn? Yes. But what if the critters are men? There's a guy eating turnips in the barn. I think he's homeless. What? He said he's not a bad guy. You spoke to him? Only a little. Dad! Who's in here? I've got a gun. No, please, I yield. <laughs> Lost out. I told you to stay inside. Please do not shoot me, witch. Keep calling me that. Give me a reason. What are you doing in my barn? I'm sorry. I seem to have confused things. I've hit my head. Was that before or after you robbed a costume shop? I wonder, may I speak with your husband? No, you can't. He's gone. Henry. Oh, my condolences. Keep them. Oh, you're a spinster. 
forced to wear pants and look mannish to protect your family. Okay, now you're pushing it. I pray you are not offended. Do not come any closer. I am not a spinster, and I am offended. Go get Grandpa. Go. And leave you here Henry, alone? now! You live with your father. Uh, my mistake. Do not move any closer. Dad! Right. Stay right there. Don't move. Honest mistake. You have pants on. Dad, didn't you hear me? Hear what? I was calling you. Dinner's ready. There's a homeless guy in the barn. What? Why didn't you tell me? He seems a little off. I think he hit his head. Is that gun loaded? No, I didn't have time, but I think he's harmless. I think I need a first aid kit. This is so cool. We better get Ted out here. Really? I think he's just lost and confused. And hungry. I mean, how hungry do you have to be to eat raw turnips? Mm. This is quite possibly the best stew I've ever eaten. Seriously? The man clearly has a refined palate. The man's probably got a name. Who are you? Rip, I believe. My Christian name is Richard. But everyone calls me Rip. Got a last name to go with that? It is. That's odd. Well, I'm Sarah, and that is my father, Calvin, and Henry. You don't remember your last name? Henry. Strange. Since I woke, it's as if I'm in a fog. I just... I remember bits and pieces. I'm not sure from whence I have come or where I'm going. The countryside, the, the landmarks, they all seem familiar, yet... They're all sitting strangely. Well, where are you from originally? Here. I would say here. Okay. Uh, Do you ever meet the Harrisons? They had the next farm over. They sold it about a year before your mother passed. And then those developers came and built all those ugly houses all over the property. <clears throat> yeah, if the Harrisons had a boy, would have been about his age. He was in the service, if I recall. Were you in the military? Yes, ma'am. 25th Infantry Regiment. I remember we, we saw considerable skirmishes during the war. I served in the Navy myself. Oh, great. Uh, that'll be Ted. Come on. What's going on? Everyone okay? Nothing to worry about. Everything's fine. Except we have a robber living in our barn now. You, in the house now? Fine. In the barn? Uh, just, just, uh, wait a second. Um, do you remember the Harrisons who used to live down the road? Yeah. Uh, so Dad thinks he remembers maybe they had a son who was a veteran. I don't, I don't know, but this could possibly be him. I mean, he may have PTSD, but I really don't think that he's... A... Not dangerous, if that's your concern. You are from the local constabulary? The, the what? No, I'm Deputy Ted Kohler with the Doolittle County Sheriff's Department. We think Ted can help you figure out how you got here. He would like me to go with him. He has the resources to help you. Yeah. Uh, whoa, hey, hey, hey. Uh, Ted, that's not necessary. This is a strange carriage. You have no horses. Horses? Oh, yeah, I got uh, 380 of them right under the hood there. They must be tiny. Yeah, they're real small. Why don't you uh, get in the back here and we'll talk about it. And you, yeah, you want to watch your head as you get in there. Good. Nice. And yeah, you, you can just get in. Good luck, Rip. Thank you. Good job. Hey, watch your fingers, okay? Rip. Was he uh, some kind of surfer or something? Sounds like you're jealous. Really? Why, should I be? Yeah, it's been a whirlwind. We met an hour ago and we're already engaged. Is that right? Mm. <laughs> Henry found him in the barn. He fell, he hit his head. I gave him an ice pack, but he doesn't seem to remember who he is or how he got here. Or what a car is, right. yeah. Okay, well, I'll run him by the hospital after I fingerprint him and get him checked out. Thank you. 
Oh, hey. Actually, while I'm here, I didn't... I don't know if you've heard, but there's a new restaurant out in New Haven. Everyone's raving about it, and I was thinking... You were thinking you'd leave a man with a concussion in the back of your squad car while you make a date? Fair point, sir. I'll call you, okay? All right. You can, uh, just take a rest there, bud. Well, that's that. Yep. At least you didn't offer him the apple pie. Hmm? It's just a hospital. They've got those where you're from? Yeah, nothing to be afraid of. Did, did you see that? I did, yeah. I'm just gonna go speak with the deputy for a minute. Are you gonna be okay in here? Okay. So, there's no signs of concussion or any other head trauma, but he's definitely confused. I asked him when the last time he seen a dentist and he said that he wanted to get his hair cut. So. <laughs> yeah, sounds like our guy. Uh, his fingerprints didn't register in any of our databases. Says his name's Rip. Hmm. I don't know. It's normal. At this point, I guess we've got ourselves a John Doe. Okay, well, we are required to keep him overnight for observation, but you'll let me know if you find out anything else? Will do. Thanks, Doc. Oh, dear. Now he's up. Apologies, madam. I did not want to startle you, but I couldn't think of what I should say. Um, hello is always a good way to start. Yes, of course. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Are you all right? I stayed at your hospital last night. They told me I should rest, but then a woman in a white uniform kept coming into my room every two hours and waking me up, asking me if I was sleeping. It was not restful. Yeah, um... Hospitals are a little weird like that. So, here you are, again. Yes. Um, I had a question. So you came back. Hello. Apologies for the intrusion again. Actually, I wanted to ask if I could work off the meal you so generously provided last night. Yeah, do you want to pull pigweed out of the fields? Henry, that's your job. But he wants to help. That is not necessary. Are you sure you're all right? The carriages and doors and lanterns all work by themselves. Am I dead? Is this heaven? If this were heaven, I'm not so sure he'd be here. I am a lucky man to have a funny daughter. Are you gonna talk all day or do you wanna pull some weeds? Henry, go finish your morning chores before the bus gets here. Thank uh... you. I think I have something you could help with. Come on. Shouldn't we tell him he can use the moving machine? Why? He's doing a better job than the pump. Okay. Um, well, I was about to go make some breakfast. Mm. Eggs and bacon. Real pork. What else would it be? Vegan. Vegan? I don't know what that is. No animal product? Meatless? Bacon? Yeah, or some people use turkey. That's not bacon. Why would you do that? Oh, I like this guy more and more. <sighs> I noticed the apple trees are in want of trenching to help the roots absorb water. And 
I wondered if you had considered pruning out the center branches to help avoid the blight. Yeah, that's something we would have normally done that by now, but it's a bigger job than the two of us can handle. Our farmhand, Errol, he left last winter. Well then, I feel obliged to offer my assistance. Pretty good. Well, I guess you already know, but your mystery man wandered out of the hospital this morning. Yeah, he showed up here. Um, what'd you find out? Wish you would have called me. I ran his prints and mugshots, and nothing's come up at all. So I sent his prints over to the military archive, see if we can find his service records. Mm. So far, nothing back from them either. We really have no idea who this guy is. I think it's best if I take him off your hands. If he is a veteran who has some sort of trauma or PTSD, then the last place for him is jail. Oh, I'm not talking about jail, necessarily. There's no warrants out. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to swear in a trespassing complaint? No. 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 Mm -hmm. Definitely don't want to do yeah, that. I don't think so. But I do think it's fair to say that he needs further evaluation. You know, at a psych hospital or something. Really? What else is there? I mean, I guess... It wouldn't hurt to let him stay in the farmhand house for just like a day or two. Sarah. Just until we figure out what's wrong. I mean, someone could be worried sick that he's missing. Sarah, we don't really know who this guy is. Could be Norman Bates. Or he could be Forrest Gump. I mean, what if he was your family, huh? Would you want him institutionalized? You are a good person. <laughs> Lock your doors. I mean it. First sign of trouble, you call me. Of course. Okay. Oh. Um... You never did give me an answer about this weekend? The new restaurant? Oh, right, right. Oh, you're asking now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Yeah? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I will pick you up on Saturday at 7. And in the meantime, anything odd happens. You will be the first one I call. Thank you. All right. See ya. See ya. that once we finish up here, maybe we can try and find out a little bit more about your chest. Your, your past. Your, your, your past. I'm gonna, um... Look, I... Why don't you take these things into the barn? Go right on. Hey, so the Harrisons that live down the road, they do have a son, and check out this article that I found on him. Local man receives Purple Heart. Does that sound familiar to you? Were you wounded? Did you receive a medal? Yes. I, I was wounded in battle, and I was awarded a commendation. Okay. Now, with all that hair, how can we tell if that's him? How would you feel about a haircut and a shave? All right. Turn up. So, what are we in the mood for? Mm, something a little more clean cut. <laughs> what is that thing? Normally only little kids get scared of the clippers. <laughs> You're fine. Really, it's okay. Yeah, just, just uh, sit down. There you go. All right. That is not the same guy. Who are you then? You said you were in the military and that you were wounded. Was it Iraq, Afghanistan? Do you remember anything? I don't know of those battles. My regiment never gone south of Delaware. Delaware? <laughs> Who were you fighting in Delaware? The British. Hey, Waylon. Just finishing up here. Afternoon, bud. Hello, Sarah. Hello. 
Calvin. I never saw you at the BFW the other night. Well, it was storming, Waylon. Some of us have property to look after. Or I suppose some of us are just more dedicated than others. <laughs> I'm uh, Waylon Finster. How do you do? I'm Rip. Uh, uh, Rip was just telling us how he was fighting the British in Delaware. Aren't you the funny one? <laughs> well, that's not really true. Because that would be crazy. The farthest south we had battles was New Jersey. Reenactments. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know, I'm a Revolutionary War buff myself. I'm quite an admirer of that period. We waged war. Often against former kinsmen. It, it was a terrible and grueling time. Are you saying that you enjoyed it? I think it's time for us to go. Dad? Yeah. Nice seeing you. Uh, thanks, bud. Uh, Mr. Rip. Good luck. Thank you. You eat it. Eat it? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Good seeing you, Waylon. Right. I fear I may have offended your friend. Who? That guy? <laughs> He's a know-it-all who thinks he invented the American Revolution. To hear him talk, he was leading the troops himself. How absurd. Exactly. He bears no resemblance to General Washington. Okay. Come. Come on, Paul Revere. This way. Gotta get to the car that way. What are you doing? You give these to children. You have to take the wrapper off. That outside part. Oh, all right. Hey. We're fixing the holes where the raccoons are getting in. He, um, he does seem to know his way around a farm. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? We are not paying him a nickel a day to work here. Oh, I guess not. <laughs> But I was thinking of something a little more long-term, if we could work it out. Hmm. Well, I guess we could ask him. Hey, Rip. Um, so, what would you think about coming to work for us as a farmhand? We can't pay much, um, but it'll be fair. And I promise you'll be well fed. You could even stay in the farmhand house. I mean, it's old and drafty, but the roof is good and it'll keep you dry. So it's small, but cozy. Errol lived and worked here even before we bought this farm. Are you all right? I promise it's, it's not that bad. This is where I grew up. It's, it's all coming back to me now. This is my house. Maybe it just looks like your house. So this is it. This, this isn't right. Everything is new. No, no, it's, it's actually not new. You might actually want to sweep out some of these cobwebs. I'm most certain about this place. There. Andy, do you see that? See what? Right there in the wood. Oh, those markings are from before our time. What does it say? Roman numerals? Those are initials. My initials. Rip Van Winkle the second. Rip Van Winkle? You like the story? What story? I was eight. I was eight when I carved these. My, my mother was so upset that she, she took the switch to me. So what are those numbers then? Well, that's my birth date. The 8th of April, 1758. Give <laughs> me a break. What would you like me to break? 1758? So you, you're like a thousand years old? More like 250, but he's joking. No, I'm, I'm 31 years of age. So you're born in like... 1991. 1991? Now you're the one who's being funny. No, 1758. It's 2022. No, it's 1789. No, 2022. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. How is that even? Rip? 
This is what happens when you hire a guy who's willing to work for five cents a day. Is he dead? No. No. <sighs> I'm home. How are you feeling? I was having the oddest of dreams. I, I somehow found myself... In the year 2022? <sighs> this could go on all night. <sighs> okay, just just relax, okay? Get your bearings. Welcome back. I've got something for you. I knew I had this on a bookshelf somewhere. Here. <sighs> Take a little bit and read that. Sketchbook of Jeffrey Crayon. Read the story where the bookmark is. We'll just, uh be here until you've had a chance to take all that in. You all right? This story, it's about my father. It's an old folk tale. It's not real. No, this is Washington Irving. I, I know him. He's a boy who's always lingering about the tavern which my father frequents. So you're saying that Washington Irving took your father's true story and passed it off as fiction, is that right? No. It's clearly preposterous. Thank you. My father is a liar and a drunk. His story was absurd. You're not from ancient times. That's impossible. I was born in this house on that date I carved. I was christened after my father, Richard Van Winkle Sr. He was a man of minor ambition which did not sit well with my mother. She was a woman of flaring tempers with ample wind to fan them. Considering the harsh state of my parents' union, it should not have come as a surprise when my father disappeared completely. And yet, I keenly felt his absence. The burden of the farm work fell to me from a young age. His abandonment became like coals from a low-stoked fire. It fueled my determination not to be like him. When I was 17, a storm that had been brewing began to blow, even into this tranquil valley. And thus, I found myself fighting in that grim and bloody conflict which would make of this a free nation. was won at great cost. I was wounded, but even in that, I was luckier than most. Times were hard, but the farm was constant, and we still had the land to provide for us. As time passed, my mother passed on to her maker and my sister married. I was left to tend the field and fight the gnawing sting of my father's abandonment. And so, it was with quite some astonishment then that one day a strangely familiar figure appeared as if an apparition from the mountains. After 20 years, my father had returned. And to excuse his craven desertion, he concocted the most outlandish tale. He claimed that he had gone hunting for game up amidst the local hills. After trailing much farther than planned, he came into a high dell. Here he found a stash of brandy in a curious cave. After helping himself to that brandy, my father claimed that a fearsome thunderstorm roared across the valley. And it was here he stated that he must have fallen asleep for 20 years. Of course it was a preposterous claim. And I determined to prove that there was no mineral-laden cave as he described. However, 
After a prolonged journey up past Catraskill Point, nestled along the eastern ridge of the mountain, I was forced to temper my disbelief when I came upon such a cave. My timing was fortuitous. For at that point, the dark rolling clouds which had been pursuing me lay to them, as if the heavens themselves were rent. To my surprise, there was a flagon, just as my father had told. And as the chill of the storm settled upon my bones, I was obliged to warm myself with a swig from that brandy. And as the storm raged, I fell into a deep slumber. <laughs> When I awoke, I became aware of a ravenous hunger and set back down the mountain. But I found myself in a strange and altered landscape where mighty pines had stood just hours before. There was now brush and bramble. And prolific streams had turned into rock and impenetrable woods. It was as though I was looking upon the world anew and I understood not why. My mind was cloudy, as if I had been through some dream. It was shortly after that I encountered all of you in the barn. I know how far-fetched this sounds. <laughs> no. You're the son of Rip Van Winkle. You decided to disprove your father's story, that Washington Irving had turned into a work of fiction. But you wound up falling asleep in a cave in the mountain, just like your dad, and then you woke up here in 2022. Well, yes, it appears so. I... That's crazier than Grandpa's alien story. You know what? I think it is time to get you to bed. What do you say, Dad? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, I hope you will find the house more comfortable than the hospital. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, well, that's a good idea. I'm not afraid. I, I just think he's confused. But, um, Ted said to lock the door, so... I'm getting to an age when I will take interesting with a side of crazy over sane and boring any old day. Night, Flash. Night, Grandpa. So? Can we keep him? It's kind of cool. Okay. Time for bed, you. Mom! Look, I'm gonna talk to Ted and we're gonna figure all this out, okay? Ted ruins everything. Ted does not ruin everything. You just take him away. Look. I just want to make sure that that man gets the help that he needs, okay? All right, good night. I love you. Freak, my Uncle Whalen says that you and your grandpa aren't the weirdest people around town anymore. Shut up, Wiley. Says that you got a freak living with you. I'm not surprised. Freaks like to hang together. 
I'd rather be a freak than a Neanderthal. All right, yes. I will uh, talk to him about keeping his dog off your lawn. Yes, absolutely. Mrs. Cawthon, let me call you back. Okay, yeah, I promise I will. Bye. Sarah. Hey. Hi, w what a pleasant surprise. I, I wasn't expecting to see you today. Yeah, I was just picking some things up and decided to say hi. Well, I'm so glad you did. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, um... Oh. Have a seat here. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um. Um. So. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I was wondering, have you heard more on Rip? Why? What, what's wrong? Did, did he do something? No, no, not at all. I knew this was a mistake. No, no, he's, he's polite and he works hard. I was just curious if you heard back from the military about an ID for him. Nothing yet, no. Mm. Maybe it's time we call in some help. What would that entail? Uh, well, we could have him committed by the county under 5150. I mean, just until they get a sense of what's going on. Committed? Look, Sarah, I know you think I'm going overboard here, but if this guy is really unstable, he doesn't belong anywhere near you or Henry or your dad. Okay? We need to be prudent. I can't protect you out there. He's harmless. Well, I, I, I hope so. I hope so. But I don't know. What, what would you like me to do? You know what? Never mind. I'll just, um, I'll figure it out and I'll let you know. Um, but in the meantime, would you mind letting me know if the military gets back to you? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. See ya. See ya. I left you a snack on the counter, and then I want you to come out here and help me load up for the farmer's market, okay? Hey, will you come here, please? Hey, what happened? It's not a big deal. Well, it looks like a big deal to me. No, just leave it alone. Henry! to approach your castle, Sir Henry. It's just a rock. Oh. When I was your age, rocks were hardly ever just rocks. More often, they were watchtowers or ramparts. And there used to be two big boulders right over there. That was Fort Duquesne. What's that? It was an outpost in the French and Indian War. No more ancient history. Things did not go well at school. I hate Wiley Shump. Who is Wiley Shump? It's just this kid. He's really big. I wish I could kick his butt. Hmm. See that wall? Yeah. I built that. Some of those rocks were nearly as big as me, but I learned to use leverage to move them. I moved those stones onto that wall. So? So? Rocks, soldiers, scoundrels, chumps. There are ways to use their size against them. You mean, you could teach me to beat up Wiley? I have seen a lot of combat. It's awful. Fighting is a terrible thing, and it should be avoided if there is any other way. But if you find yourself with no options, yes. I can teach you ways to defend yourself. Thank you. Here we go. Oh, and don't forget to saute those beet grains. They are delicious. Yeah. Have a good one. Those ladies are back again. <laughs> would you ladies care for another sample of our homemade apple butter? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you would like to take some home. It's only five shillings. Dollars. Dollars. A jar. I'll take a bottle. I'll take two. Very well. He certainly seems to be able to make friends very easily. Are you going to keep making jokes or are you going to go help the customers? I'm going to go help the customers. Hi. 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 So that's five apiece. Thanks.
Pardon me. I didn't mean to disturb you. You're not disturbing me. There was an errant chicken who decided to roost outside my window. I was helping her find her way back to the coop. You seem to be enjoying your evening. Yeah, just enjoying a rare moment of quiet. Henry's asleep and Dad's at the VFW. Apologies for the interruption. I shall take my leave. No, I mean, you can stay if you want. I, I'm just playing a game on my phone. Here, come here, I'll show you. Only if you're sure I'm not disturbing you, ma'am. The only thing disturbing me is you calling me ma'am. Propriety would require... Okay, it's not the 18th century anymore. I am unaccustomed to any woman over the age of 20 being unaccounted for, especially an incredibly pretty one. Um, apologies, I've, I've overstepped. Trust me, I'll let you know when you've overstepped. Hmm. All right, come here, let me show you this. That <laughs> is quite an object, you're flashy thingamajig. My phone? Yeah, I guess it kind of is. Phone? How does it work? That I don't know, but I can show you what it does. All right. So this game is really just a fun way of knocking things down. See? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you had games like this when you were a kid, no? We had Skittles, nine pins, that sort of thing. Mm. But mostly, we just made our own toys. Like what? Um, <laughs> That's amazing. You have to show me how to do that. <laughs> What are you two doing? <laughs> Wait, show him. Do it again. Do it again. Listen to this. <laughs> Impressive. So, I'm tired. I'll see the two of you tomorrow. Good night. Oh, um, Dad, will you carry Henry to bed for me, please? Sure. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Okay, come here. You have to show me how to do that now. Certainly. I want to know the trick. <laughs> okay. Okay. You hold the blade of grass between your two thumbs like so. Mm -hmm. Pull it taut, and then you just blow. <laughs> it sounds like a duck call. <laughs> <laughs> you think I am? Uh, according to you, really old. Well, the answer is still no. Thank you so kindly for the meal. You're welcome. Okay, homework. <sighs> <sighs> Thank you so much for everything you've done. Really, I didn't think we would be able to get it all done this season. It has been my pleasure. <sighs> May I? Yeah, of course. You must be missing some of your friends and family. Yes, there are a few people I miss very much. Mm -hmm. You married? I never found much time for courtship. Well, we're still young. We are? <laughs> yeah. 
My girlfriends in the city, they put their career before marriage and kids. I mean, they won't even think about it until they feel like they've really established themselves. I admit, when I first arrived, I found myself amazed by these new societal constructs. <laughs> no doubt. Women wear trousers and vote and labor at men's jobs. Mm, yes, we do. And just as well, thank you very much. As ably as any man could. Yep. And yet still with no less than the perfect essence of womanhood. It has stirred in me a, a realization. Hmm. There once was a man named Thomas Jefferson. He was a great statesman and philosopher. And... I know who Thomas Jefferson was. Of course. The noble Mr. Jefferson stirred our people to freedom by declaring that all men are created equal. Mm -hmm. However, it seems quite evident to me now that his declaration was flawed. Had he known Sarah Majors, he should have included women in his proclamation. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, <clears throat> there's, uh, there's a doctor at New York College of Medicine and Technology who I contacted. I told her about you, and she's very interested in your story and very curious to meet you. Truthfully. Mm -hmm. Hey. I know, I know. Homework. I want you to have this. It's a toy. You can play with it, and then you won't have to be afraid of the real tractor. That's very kind. And then maybe you can think of everything like that. Tractors, trucks, helicopters. Like, they're all just big toys. I would like very much to talk to your expert. Okay. Hmm. It's been a long time since I've been to the city. Okay, um, uh, I just want to warn you. New York has changed a little bit. Is Broadway still there? Yes. I once walked all the way from the Battery to Greenwich Village. Are those places still there? Yes, but... Through Lisbonard's Meadow, past the Manhattan Well. I know it will look different, but I'm prepared. Okay, uh, but I just don't want you to freak out. Freak out? This is what I meant by freaking out. I see. Mm. As I count backwards, your eyes will become heavier and heavier. After I reach one, you will be in a deep hypnotic state. Do you understand? Yes. Five, four, three, Two, one. Thank you for bringing his case to my attention. It's quite fascinating. Can you help him? He does seem to have gone through a war. But the most intriguing thing is that, as a coping mechanism, I think his brain has created an elaborate delusion which places his trauma to a war almost 250 years in the past. I believe this makes it somehow safer for him. Is this common? I mean, have you seen this before? No, it's quite unusual. Especially for a patient to maintain such a complex delusion under hypnosis. We'd like to do a few more tests. Yeah, sure. Not sure what this foreign object is, but we could remove it simply with the local anesthetic. Remove it? Now? You all right? 
I need a leather strap to bite on. Please don't start yet. Uh, actually, we're almost done. How did you do that? Anesthesia. Oh, I, I suppose I'm fine then. Yeah. What do you think that is? I was shot. That is a brown bass musket ball. Let's stop making those in 1820. Where, uh, <laughs> where'd you find it? It was pulled from this man's leg. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of reenactors going pretty far, but you, my friend, you take the cake. This even be the same place. I know. It looks different to me, and I only left ten years ago. You lived in New York City? Yeah, yeah. Um, until Simon left. Your husband? No, baby daddy. Baby daddy? Yeah. <laughs> we weren't married. I know that sounds unusual to you, but it's really not that uncommon anymore. He left uh, right before Henry was born. I'm sorry, there is nothing less honorable than a man abandoning a woman's child. Yeah, well, that's something we both can agree on. Anyway, but really, I'm, I'm fine now. So you left the city? Yes, uh, so my parents had just retired, and I admit I was feeling a bit overwhelmed, so I took a hiatus on my advertising job. I thought it would be temporary, but then my mom got Alzheimer's, so I stayed. Uh, Alzheimer's is a disease where you stop being able to remember things. Like me? No, not quite. Anyways, it was a difficult couple of years. But you know what I realized? People need healthy foods, not food filled with chemicals. And that's where I feel like I'm really accomplishing something. Mm. straight <laughs> are you sure it's safe for us to be up the side <laughs> yes okay you see that building right there that building is still standing and it was built 90 years ago come on oh my yeah it's pretty impressive isn't it I wonder if this is what heaven must be like <laughs> Yeah, I have to admit, it still takes my breath away. Who'd have dreamed we'd be capable of such edifices? Humans seem intent on always wanting more, going bigger. It's reassuring to know we got it right. The architecture? No. All of this. America. When we battled for our independence, it was really just a theory. A democracy. And at the time, it seemed like a grand experiment. We didn't know if we'd survive as a people, as a country. It's good to see that we managed to figure it out. I don't know that we figured it out. I mean, not by a long shot. After all this time, we keep trying. I think that's what's important. Well, at the very least, it's good to know that the ideals we fought for, they have definitely amounted to all this. When I look around, I see something grand and marvelous. It does seem to allow people to take the liberties, I suppose. <laughs> well, it is pretty romantic. When we run out of probable explanations for your story, then perhaps it's time to consider improbable ones. We've had a request for you to discuss all of this with Dr. Silver. He teaches quantum theory in our physics department. 
You see, we've run different combinations of elements through our computer models in order to formulate an equation that would account for certain types of quantum anomalies. Is this all commonplace mysticism for you? Because I understand this bit as well as I do your tractor. I have no idea what he's talking about either. Sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I may have gotten a little carried away in my excitement. You see, you, sir, may represent the living embodiment of this theory. What exactly is the theory? Well, let me explain it to you another way. You see, quantum physics is a science which examines physical phenomena, usually along a subatomic scale. And now here's an example. And we've recently taken trace amounts of new uranium particles and placed them at the Bikini Atoll. Were the nuclear bombs tested? Yes, that's right. I don't know what any of that is. That's fine, but here's what's significant. Now, we've noticed disturbances in the present-day uranium particles similar to what we would expect to find after a nuclear blast, even though that event took place over 70 years ago. You see? There seems to be a connection between the particles that exist across time. How does that apply to Rip? Well, let's imagine that this is the history of America, from the establishment of the colonies all the way up to the present time. Now, we have always assumed that time moves us at a consistent pace just one way along this line. But the behavior of the uranium particles suggests that great energetic disturbances create wormholes. Now this would explain how a person such as yourself from this point in time could end up at this point in time. If the cave that you mentioned had high amounts of lead, zinc, molybdenum, and trace amounts of a radioactive element like uranium, or radium even, and it was subject to sudden intense jolts of energy like the lightning strike that you described, it would effectively create a wormhole. And that wormhole would result in a fold or a tear in time, landing you, my friend, in the future. So you're saying his story is real? Do you think I could get back to my own time? The answer to both your questions is theoretically yes. Yes, it's possible. Grand and marvelous. What's that? Thank you. For what? For taking me here. And for taking my story seriously. And for taking me in. When you found me in your barn, you were very gracious and trusting. I don't pretend to understand this new world, but I believe I've learned enough to know that it was an unlikely and generous thing. You're welcome. Do you think what the doctor told us is true? <laughs> I wish I knew. I... I don't know. Some days on the farm, I, I feel as if there's no place I'd rather be. But then there are times like this, this trip into the city, where I worry I might never fit into this new world. But it sure is something. <laughs> So does something need to be wrong? I just haven't seen you in a little while. Right. I'm sorry. I've just been, I've just been really busy. I thought so. Yeah. You know, I was thinking Sarah must be so busy, and Sarah must need a break. So I was thinking we uh, grill up some steaks, and I brought a nice ball of that red that you like. Good liked. evening, deputy. Um, it's daytime, but right. Uh, um, Ted. Ted was just stopping by to say hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. You know, I was hoping that I could just have a little moment with Sarah, just the two of us. Oh. Um. Certainly. I'll get back to loading the carriage. Uh, truck. Thank you. Yeah, that, that one. Thanks. Good day. Good day.
How's it going with him? Giving you any trouble? No, not at all. Okay, well listen, while I'm here, I actually got a response from the National Military Archive and there's absolutely no record of your guy ever having served in the military. His name is Rip. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not his real name. What are you trying to say, Ted? Well, people in town have been talking about this crazy story of his and we're all more than a little concerned. And, you know, I've heard of situations like this before. Really? You've heard of situations like Rip's? Situations where a con artist comes along and tells a wild story to some easy marks, yeah. Oh, oh, so I assume that Dad and I are the easy marks in this story. Sarah, come on, I'm just worried that he might be taking advantage of you. Ted, I, I can't do this right now. I'm so sorry. I, I just, I'm like, I'm really busy. Can we talk later? Sure. Um, what about this weekend? Look, I, I appreciate the offer. I am just so slammed right now. No, I mean the festival. You're gonna come, aren't you? Right. Yes, the festival. Of course. I, I, I will be at the festival. Okay, then. And uh, maybe at another time for the stakes. <sighs> sure, sure. Uh, don't work too hard. <laughs> Thanks. All right. You'll be on a sugar high all night. You'll be fine. Come on, I see Bloom's hard cider stand over there. Oh, go easy, both of you. Does that bother you? No, it rather delights me. Don't worry, no one's thinking any the worse of us. And even if they were, I wouldn't care. Indeed. Why does that not surprise <laughs> me? Hmm? So what about you, Rip? What do you want to do? At the moment, I should like nothing more than to accompany you to wherever your heart may fancy. Ooh, you better be careful. You don't know what you're getting yourself into. Oh, dear. Let's go have some fun. It's loud! Where are the musicians? How have they secreted them inside this box? No, that's a speaker. You're not supposed to stand that close to it. It's just a recording. You see that guy? He's playing the music. Oh. This is rock music. What do you think? I'm not sure I could think at all. Good, that's the point. You're just supposed to dance. It's OK to let yourself go. Just listen to the beat and let your body do the rest. <laughs> Maybe a little more fluid, yeah? Pardon me, kind sir. Uh, I, I don't imagine you would be able to play something a bit, um, older. Perhaps a, a gentle ballad to which one could dance. Well, that's an improvement.
Hey, Greek, what are you doing? Leave me alone, Wiley. What do you got there? I'm hungry. Oh, yeah, I just remembered. I hate candy apples. <laughs> oh, are you gonna cry? Come on, freak, stand up. <laughs> that is a genuine colonial farming tool which was found near this thresher. Well, look, it's Calvin Majors. Now, have you been telling more of those incredible stories, Calvin? <laughs> Don't tell us. You came to America on the Mayflower. Leland, you're a pompous blowhard. Well, maybe. At least I'm not nuts. <laughs> now, as I was saying, this thresher here would have been used by the local farmers to harvest their barley and uh, other grains. I beg your pardon? Look. It's the OG, the crazy man himself. <laughs> Perhaps. But what I find really crazy is how much this man is charging for items for which he is clearly misrepresenting. Well, now, just a second here. This device, for example, this was not used for threshing grain. It is a flax break. If you will allow me, you will notice this hole. There's a wooden peg which is missing, on which this handle hinged. When the flax was harvested, they would draw it across these wooden slats while bringing this handle down repeatedly. It would break up the fibers of the flax plant so they could be carded, and spun into thread, and woven into linen. And that item which you are about to buy, madam, that is not a farming implement, as he stated. It is a child's toy. And it is broken. I feel, excuse me, I can hear my phone ringing. Hopefully it's someone who knows what they're talking about. You obviously don't. Oh, that was amazing. I have never seen Waylon so embarrassed. Oh, I don't think I needed that last cider. Or the one before that. Oh, yeah. Let's get you to bed. <clears throat> Hmm, it's, it's a flax break. Oh, I think I heard my phone ringing. <sighs> you don't have to do that. I don't mind. Your father. You're lucky to have him. I should say goodnight. Okay. Rip! Sir. The man of old fashioned principles. Good night, sir.
Were you expecting someone else? It's a nice farm, isn't it? She's made a good life here. In the business, it's taken off. She's really made something out of this place. Yes, I have a tremendous admiration for Sarah and her accomplishments. Excuse me. I bet you do. So, I suppose you're probably thinking things are going according to plan, huh? Mm. Sorry, I'm not sure I understand. Look, I... It's just you and me here, so... Can we drop the whole innocent, I don't know anything about anything act and just talk? Because you know there's no way I can let a con man like you take advantage of good people like this, right? I assure you that is not what I am doing here. I have tried to behave in only the most honorable manner. Honorable? Yes. Interesting. Let me tell you what I see. You come along out of nowhere, acting innocent and confused and helpless. And somehow you get them to go along with your ridiculous stories and maybe eventually they feel sorry enough for you to keep you hanging around. How am I doing so far? So now what? Oh, please, enlighten me. Well, you're not really gonna stick around, we both know that. No. You fooled these people into thinking you belong here. But you do not. And in the end, all you're gonna do is break their hearts. I would never want that. Good. I hope that's true. Because I love that woman. And I will not see her hurt. I want to give her things you never could. I mean, what do you really bring to the table? Aside from silly stories and zero prospects. I think I have something to offer that men of this time have long forgotten. <laughs> I gotta give it to you, man. You are good with words. I mean, this whole, this whole thing, it works. But listen up, Rip. If you truly love Sarah, just do the right thing. Your presence here is doing damage to her and her entire family. I can't even imagine what you mean. I'm... Well, that's the problem, isn't it? Because she's not going to tell you. She's too kind, too good. But she is becoming a joke in this town, and I won't have it. Her son is being bullied. Her dad is being mocked. All because they have a guy living with them who claims he knew George Washington. I know how it sounds. But it's the truth. A real man wouldn't do this, Rip. Even if he is delusional enough to think he fought in the American Revolution. I'm telling you right now, there is no future for you here. And if you stay a moment longer, you might not have any future left at all. There's those words again. He's ready, and I'm about to go fix some eggs. Good morning. The tongue feels like it's wearing a sweater. We were running a little bit late this morning. The storm temporarily knocked out the power, so my alarm didn't go off. Mom, do I have to go to school? There's going to be some storm. Get your butt into gear. All right, don't forget we have to batten down the chicken coops and check the latches on the barn. Or if you're like me, get caught up on some sleep. 
This one has the potential to develop into one of the biggest electrical storms we've seen in decades. Hey! I think I've almost gotten everything in order. Well, I brought you a sandwich and some apple pie. That's very... You're very kind. It's the least I can do. It's never the least with you. Well, uh, Dad and I are going to run to the store, just pick up some things in case we're stuck here for the next few days with the storm. You'll be all right? I hope so, Sarah Majors. I very much hope so. Are you, are you, are you okay? About last night, you, you just seem, you seem a little, um... No, last night was the most wonderful moment of my life. We should make sure to put extra tie downs on the barn doors and shutters. Yeah, get right on there. I can't find Rip. Not in the orchard or the barn. Check the farmhouse. Hey. Hi, honey. How was school? We practically didn't do anything today. I totally could have stayed home. Oh, yeah? Why? I don't know. Everyone was just talking about the storm. Sarah. It's from Rip. My dearest Sarah, Henry, and Calvin. I must sincerely apologize for my sudden departure. I if fear that if I were given weeks, weeks or months in the world's greatest volumes, I still would never find the proper words to express my gratitude or convey the depth of my feelings. And thus, I will depart, much as I arrived, with no fanfare or warning. This storm seems like my best chance to return to where I indeed belong. I'm sure it will be for the betterment of us all. Since I have no desire to cause your family any more distress, it is with a heavy heart and all of my fondest affections I bid you farewell. Yours most truly and always, Rip. Why would he say that? He's going back to the cave. I have to stop him. What if he does get back to his time and I don't even get to say goodbye? I'll find him. Where? Up along the eastern ridge, right? He said Catterskill Point. I think he meant Eagle Peak. Two and a half centuries in time, and I'm the one who's crazy? I left you a letter. You said you were causing us distress? What does that even mean? Ted enlightened me. Ted? What does Ted have to do with this? I'm ruining your reputation. I have nothing to offer you. <laughs> I decide what you have to offer me. 
a chance for you to get back. Sarah, I am a man who may forever be out of the right time and place. But I will gladly forego my chance to return to where I belong if you would do me the unimaginable honor of giving me your hand in marriage. <laughs> to get married yet but how about we go out for a date or two <laughs> April 12th, 2022, as I finally consider the strange occurrences which have befallen me, I am loath to admit I have spent the better part of my life consumed with bitterness towards my father. Truthfully, through no fault of my father's, my life has been quite lonely. I now deeply regret such animosity. However, all of that has changed. The house I have always lived in has finally become a home, and it's only taking me a few centuries to find it. I have discovered happiness with a remarkable woman and her son and her father. They have opened my eyes to true love. I only wish I could share such a gift with my father. I am not certain where my future lies, or if I will ever return to him. But I pray, somehow, that he will know his son does love him well. I have learned about such things from a remarkable woman who wears pants and who gives me hope that in the future all things are possible.